by far the biggest in the game. By far the biggest in the game. <clears throat> Happy Monday, I'm back. Yes, I am back. I'm all by myself. No sidekicks. Nobody to joke with. Nobody to play your little music to start the show. It's Biscuit, the biggest blocking, blogger in the game. I see my little niece. I see China on the check-in. And we the biggest in the game, man. And so I'm all alone. One man team. All I got is me in this talk game. It's Hector Lavo right there. Shout out to Alicia Keys, the queen. The living legend, the icon, the classiest. Beautiful mother, beautiful sister, daughter, beautiful wife, Alicia Keys. We love you, Alicia Keys. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to DJ Enough. Hot 97s. Biggie Small's original DJ. Yes, it's Biscuit. Respectfully. Um, COVID's still real. I know a lot of you guys don't care. You don't give a fuck, but I, it's my obligation. It's my obligation. Ren Ren, what's good? Yeah, you know, shout out to Rich the Barber. He came through, tightened me up. Um, all my people in Jamaica, what's good? And so, this COVID is very, very real. Please be careful. Social distance. Wear the mask. It's real out there, y'all. As Ryan Malone, Cartagena is not in the building. Rich Player is not in the building. And so I took my parents to get the vaccine. I don't have a problem with it. Everybody got their own vision on how they're going to do this. Uh, shout out to everybody out there that's been supporting the Big Big Show. Soundtrack single. Sunshine. Delight. Uh, it's been amazing. Right? And so many years I've had a lot of hits. Over the years I've been blessed, fortunate. But it was a blur because we was outside. And usually when I drop a record, y'all know I'm all around the country performing or promo to a radio station. Y'all, Breon Prescott. You went viral yesterday, Breon. Y'all know Breon, my man with the Kango. He was in that versus with Teddy Riley. Um, and so today I officially endorse Isaac Wright Jr. for mayor of New York City, the next mayor of New York City. And I told you why, and it's a link there to donate. Uh, finally, I feel like we got somebody um, that sees the world through our same lens, who's been through uh, oppression, who's been through hard times, who knows what it is to go on without food, who knows what it is to be falsely accused and go to jail and do seven years in jail and become a, a jailhouse attorney, educated himself in prison and got 20 other inmates out that had life and stuff like that. Then he eventually beat his case where he had life for 72 years. Now he's a lawyer. He came home, went to school, became a lawyer. Um, I've never heard of nothing better than that, ever in the history. And I've heard all type of stories in my life, war stories, full of shit stories, the best stories, whatever. I've never heard of a guy who got falsely accused and got life in 72 years and turned it around, got himself, his own self out of jail, and now he's an attorney serving in the same courtrooms that put him in jail. I never heard of nothing like that in my life. And it's real life. And so if you see ABC for Life, 50 Cent Show, you'll see that, the life story of Isaac Wright Jr. He is amazing. He has one idea 
this amazing to me. And then I'm going to go click and request our special guest. Because you know we're the biggest in the game. And it's never too much. Never too much. Never too much. Uh, and so... My grandmother lived in the projects NYCHA for about 60 years, 70 years. When you take out a loan in your house, it's only 20 years, 30 years the most. Uh, and so the projects in New York City are bigger than the city of Miami and the city of Atlanta. That's how much projects we got in the city of New York. But nobody owns nothing in them projects. And so you could be in there for 20, 30, 40 years, but you don't own nothing. Isaac Wright wants to make us have an opportunity to own, if you live in the projects, your own apartment from the projects. Now, what does that do? When you wonder why our schools aren't any good in the hood, is because they base it off a of property tax. And if we don't own shit, we ain't paying property tax. And so our schools are like dungeons. And then when you go in, in the nice neighborhoods, the same public schools look like 90210. Why? Because those people own their properties and they pay property taxes, which then goes to the school. Now, I don't want to over-preach to you. I'm telling you, Isaac Wright's our man. Now, shout out to Andrew Wayne. Great guy. I got number love for him. Shout out to Eric Adams. Everybody out there. Every politician that looks like they're going to win or got the clear shot to win has hollered at Fat Joe for an endorsement. Because they know I don't lie to the people. I don't sell my soul. They know I'm authentic. I looked at everybody. There's nobody I would stand next to. And I got love for everybody. More than my man Isaac Wright Jr. And I think he comes from the lens of the people. And we got a time... Tired of these politicians that been there forever, that were raised on this politics, that go through the same old sh No. Like, we need somebody who knows reality of what's going on. Somebody who's been locked up <laughs> for something he didn't do. Somebody who, you know, and he don't hold nothing against the cops. He got love for the cops. That's the way we bridge it together. Um, and, and so that was a big deal for me, uh, endorsing Isaac Wright Jr., Everybody else are good people, but that's what I did. And you click the link. You click the link. Click the link and donate. $5, $10. Whatever you got. Because we need a man of the people in there. Let me see if my people pick up. We definitely need a man of the people in there. We're going to see Rich Play. If you dare hit up our people, if you dare hit up our people, shout out to everybody supporting the new song, uh, Sunshine the Light. Shout out to everybody who went and seen the game against me and DJ Khaled. Some of you ain't see it, so I don't want to spoil it for you. I'll give you the tea. You know, but uh, one thing I do know is I'm out of shape when it comes to real live competition basketball. And I ain't going to lie to you. I watched the tape. You know, they got one, one scene where I'm just dribbling and I'm dribbling. I swear to God, I thought Khaled was defensing me, reaching for the ball. And I'm dribbling by myself like this trying to shake myself. I almost crossed myself over. It's hilarious. Who said that? Yeah, my godfather is Jose Reynosa. He is from Santo Domingo. I've been trying to get in touch with him forever. And um, let me see if I can take a picture of your Instagram because you got to let me know, like, how he's doing. I don't – I haven't heard from Jose forever. You know, my godfather for Santo Domingo. And uh, 
I love him too much. And he always used to tell me, Pidame la bendición. And uh, I've been looking for him. And so somebody says, that's your grandfather? Well, I'm going to hit you up. I took a picture of your Instagram. And please tell me what's going on with Jose. I love Jose, my godfather. Let me see. Supposed to have a special surprise guest. We got one tomorrow. Woof. Boy, do we got a dandy tomorrow, too. Sheesh. Boy, oh, boy. So New York City right now. Y'all rich. Yo, Rich, hit my people up. Let me tell you something. When I tell you, that man, my godfather used to own a bodega. And like I tell y'all all the time, I grew up in the middle of the hood. Um, blonde hair. Y'all seen the funny picture I put that I put up. Uh and blonde hair, green eyes. And so he used to always tell my mom, was like, what's this little kid doing around here? And one day he said he wanted to uh, baptize me. And thank God she did that because he's, uh, he's one of the biggest inspirations, greatest people I ever met in my life. He would take me to Yankee games. He would take me to museums. You know, shit I wasn't doing in the hood or nobody in my family even knew to do this sort of thing. Uh, he lived on Dykeman, in case y'all want to know how I know uptown so so much. Uh, and so I used to spend the weekends in his house right by the George Washington Bridge. Uh, the only thing I hated about my godfather is he used to make me eat them red things, the beets. And I would cry. He would force me to eat it, talking about it's good for me. Um, Uh-oh, where we at? Where we at? They saying we in the building. They saying my girl's in the building. Hold up. Oh shit. Oh shit. What Big Lotto. Big motherfucking Lotto. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Yo. I'm scared. No, I'm not. I'm not one of them guys. I'm the nicest guy in the world. I'm not. I'm not here for that. Here we celebrate. We celebrate the artists. We never jam you up, ever. Like but so I'm just. Do. I'm just messing with you from the Pepsi. I know. I don't, I don't. I'm not with that shit. You know. I don't know if you know. I was ear hustling when we did the challenge, uh, and you got some crazy friends. Some crazy friends. No, you got some crazy. Your, your friends are crazier than mine. Like no, no, I, they yeah, they a little yeah, they a little out there. But they fun though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They fun, right? Oh Hell yeah. Welcome to the big, 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 big show. Big Lotto. It's only right. Big Lotto. Fucking big, building. Big show. <laughs> Yo, uh, so listen, man. Uh, life must be good, huh? It's great. I'm not going to lie. I have no complaints right now. Like, I was just talking about on my story the other day, like, how happy I am with life right now. Like, it just, it feels so real. And, and me, I've, I've, I've been watching you, and you just seem so mature. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're young. Yeah. And you, how do, how, do you feel like you're so mature? Because when I was in my 20s, I thought I knew everything. I was rich and everything. And now when I think back, I don't even remember the 20s. Yeah. I don't like, know. I be feeling like I don't. You, I think you don't feel it yourself. But like when so many people tell you that, then you be like, oh, okay, I guess I'm mature. Or like when you don't really got the um, same age group friends and stuff like that. That must mean you mature, I guess. And you got a you got a great family. You got a uh, your dad, your mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they real. No, yeah, for sure. And I feel like that's part of the reason why I'm so mature, so humble, and grounded. Like. Cause you know the industry crazy, but keeping them people around me like it keep me grounded for sure. You always got to. I got an artist, her name Angelica Villa. She sings R and B, uh -huh. and her uncle manager. And I tell her all the time, keep your uncle next to you. Yeah, you got to keep the people you can really, 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 really trust. Because 
what happens is, and I don't want to preach to you, is that when you hot, everybody want to be on you. Everybody mm -hmm. act like they're your friend. Okay. And yeah. I never got robbed by nobody with a gun. I've always got robbed by people smiling at me, uh -huh. acting like they're my friends. If that ain't the truth. That's the real thing. And so you came. You came, It's Alicia Keys' birthday today. It is? Yes. <laughs> it's Alicia Keys. Shout out to Timberland. Uh, what up, Tim? Everybody on the check-in. You got your man, Ghost, the real ghost. The real everybody ghost. Everybody on the check-in <laughs> right now. Like, it's lit. What's up, everybody? I seen somebody said she a Capricorn. Of course, she grounded and mature, period. Yeah, man. And, and so you started out in the show, the rap game. Yeah. And uh, we can't take, we can't change the past, right? So, so you can't look at the videotapes. That's how you can't, you know, Fat Joe, I started in Apollo Theater. Yeah, you was telling me. And, yeah. and I was a hustler, well respected in the streets. Yeah. And I, I kind of like played myself to join this content. Like, you know, I was somebody yeah. that was like, kind of scared of, like, yeah. in the streets to go rap where they boo you off the stage, but I knew oh, what God. I wanted to do. I'm not ashamed oh, of that. Oh, you know? God. And how do you feel when you look back at the footage of, or do you ever look, or you don't look back at the rap game footage? I don't, I don't be looking back at it. I don't be looking back at it, but, like, I keep all that stuff on my on my uh, YouTube um, uh, channel and, like, um, you know, just, I keep all that content out there for the world to see because it's, like, yeah, it's embarrassing now. I look back like, girl, what the hell did you have on? Or like, you know what I'm saying? But I want people to see that come up. Like, this was not no overnight shit. This ain't no Instagram turn, Instagram model turn rapper or Instagram following turn. Like, let's do something with her followers type shit. Like, I I came from open mics and talent shows and opening up for artists when they were performing in Atlanta. Like, I came up a whole different way, and I want people to know that more than I'm embarrassed of the, 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 the fucking Yeah, you went, you went hard. You went hard for so. slot. You know what I'm saying? And, so. you know, for me, over the years, you know, I've had girls, uh, guys bring girls like, yo, I got a friend, she's an artist. I'm like, all right, right cool. Right. And they done came, walked in the studio, bad as fuck. Mm -hmm. And just stand there, and I'm like, "All right, where's the music?" And they were like, "No, I'm pretty. I think I could blow." I'm like, "Yo, you can't blow because you're oh, pretty." God. Like, what oh the God, the fuck you think this is? Like, oh like, God, but that's like the image that they they put out there. So it's like they that's what they think every female artist is, you know, stand for now. But nah, baby, you can do your research on me. I was eight years old, rocking shows, eight years old, doing open mics like that for real. And and you know what's crazy is um. So being, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Um, and so when you say the big lotto, right, yeah. I feel like that's almost like saying, I'm not little lotto mm -hmm. no more. Yeah. And, and, and so this is where a lot of artists have problems in the past. So say Justin Bieber, everybody thought he was the most handsome, cutest kid and baby, yeah. baby. Yeah. And then... He felt like he had to do something drastic, like tattoos and yeah. bad boy image. Yeah. And so, is any of like big lotto part of like trying to prove like, yo, I'm a I'm a grown young woman now. Mm -hmm. I'm not that same little girl. Yeah, definitely. That was like one of the like alter egos. Like when I was um just like transitioning from like a teenage artist to an adult artist, it was like me trying to introduce myself in a different light but i will say it wasn't like um anything planned like i just started doing it and like my team i'm grateful to have like a hundred percent creative control over everything so like when i when i was transitioning it was like it was so smooth and people asked me how i did it it's like it was just authentic so it just happened like it was like me just deciding okay now i want to rap like this i want to I want to use this in my lyrics. I want to wear this. I want to, you know what I'm saying? So everything was just natural so and authentic. So I feel like Big Lotto was just a part of that whole process. At what point you said, boom, pow, like you're going to be yeah. like, this literally, like, it's just like, you know, when you, when you, when you young, like you, you get into that, like 17, I had, um, I had started doing online school because of the rap game. So I couldn't go to a physical school 
physical school anymore. So I started doing online school. At this point, I'm paying. I'm. I've been financially free from my parents since like 16 years old. So at this point, I'm paying for my private school online. I bought my first car. I'm like, man, in my head, I'm grown. So I'm starting to, you know, wear wear certain stuff that I wouldn't normally wear or say certain things that I wouldn't normally say in the songs. But my team just let me have that that creative control. I'm so grateful for that because it made that process so smooth. Like it wasn't it wasn't like Disney star gone wild. You know what I'm <laughs> it seemed like that shit happened every time, right? Oh God, that's why I really am when I heavy, heavy, heavy on the grateful for for my team letting me do that. You know what I'm saying? So it's if you if that. you look if we look at somebody like Zendaya, like she was the yeah. last one that was big, yeah. but then she she jumped out and did that show, which is dope, Euphoria. But that's another part of I think like trying to prove, hey, I'm not the Disney uh, Zendaya. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna be wild for the night on that. Yeah, I I ain't seen that show. Oh, no, that shit fire. No, I I hear about it, though. I hear about it all the time. But, yeah, I ain't seen it. But, I, yeah, yeah, I think, like, Zendaya, she one of them, one of them, like, you know, kid star trying to be looked at as, like, adult star now. It's, it's um, I, I wouldn't say it's hard, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a task. Yeah, it's a test to transition over, but, you know, you got longevity in this game because you, you've been already doing this five, six years, right? For sure, for sure, literally. I right. mean, professionally. Mm -hmm. And you keep getting better and better and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. and, and so you're doing the right thing. And, and, for sure. And, and, you, and you seem well-grounded other than your friends got a lot of jokes. But other than that... <laughs> Look, and all my yo, friends... they fucking crazy. They right? know who you talk about, too. Y'all know he talk about Big Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know he talk about Big Lexi. Right, what's up, yo? Yo, <laughs> yo, they crazy right there. Yeah, I know he yo, talk yo, about Yo, Lotto, let me ask you a question. Um, yeah. Who are some female rappers that inspired you? For sure. So, um... I grew up, like, my daddy a hip-hop head, so I grew up listening to, uh, or, like, not me playing it, but, like, hearing in the household mm -hmm. a lot of female rappers. Like, my daddy loved DMX, so um, Eve, he loved Eve. Um, he loved TLC, so he loved um, Left Eye. So I'm hearing all these um, female rappers. I'm hearing Kim, probably that's why I talk heavy like I do now. Um, Remy, I'm hearing Trina, that's probably why I talk heavy, too. Um, Gangsta Boo, like I'm hearing all these female rappers. Ooh. My daddy a, a hip hop head for real, like he loved he loved hip hop. So I'm hearing all this stuff, but around I want to say fifth grade, that's when Nicki came out. So I'm hearing all this stuff, but it's not touching me because they they didn't have they didn't come out during my generation. You got to think I'm only 22, so I'm only like eight years old hearing this stuff. So it's not like captivating at that time. I don't have like the maturity. Um, to like, you know what I'm saying, get into it for real mm -hmm. at eight years old. But then Nikki comes out and you know, as a, at, at that age, like the Barbie theme and the color hair and like the, like it was just so animated. So it captivated me at, um, I want to say fifth grade, I think you like fourth, fifth grade, like eight years old, something like that. And that's when that put the icing on the cake. That's when I was like, oh yeah, I want to rap. I want to, you know, I want to be like Nikki. I want to, yeah, for sure. I cut my hair in a bang. I got now Barbie chain, all that, for sure. But the older I got, that's when I started going back into the female rappers that I had heard growing up. And I'm like, damn, I wish I was, I had the mental capacity to appreciate what I was growing up on back then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, when I was a kid, I loved songs that my mother and my aunt, would, would play and yeah and so I love like my third favorite artist in the world is a woman named Stephanie Mills. Uh -huh. Your moms and pops would know who she is. Uh -huh. And but but I love her so much because I remember Saturday cleaning the house with my moms. They yeah. play her shit so much. Yeah. And, they, and then and then you know and 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 so I I get exactly what you're saying. Like maybe they're a different era, but we love them because our parents introduced us to him and then right. the thing about music is so emotional so like mm -hmm. I don't care what you're doing where you at you'll yes. always remember when you used to like love oh, and God. that oh, you know God. what I mean like I'd be attaching like certain songs or certain artists to like memories of my childhood like it's, it's almost nostalgic 
certain it's gonna certain happen forever it'll happen for so it. yeah and that's the thing it still happens like not even just childhood like say a certain song was playing when i signed so now that song forever gonna remind me of that you know what i'm saying type shit you know with me i get mad as hell when i hear some slow songs that i used to sing to some chicks yeah. Back in the day, I'm like, that bitch had me singing, man. Oh, God. Yo, I'm like, oh, God. Y'all actually sung this shit? Oh, Fuck God. Fuck out of here, man. Oh, like, God. Or like, or you know, like, I hear a song, and I know, like, one of the dudes I used to talk to, or like, an ex would always play that song. I'm like, bro, turn that shit off, bro. Turn that shit off, right? Turn now, that like, we don't want to get this guy no real estate in this motherfucker right here. Like, oh, God. Yo, oh, I'm God. like. It's crazy what music do, though. Nah, music is crazy like that. Yeah. Music is crazy like that. Um rumors, this 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 is where, and I'm not going there, mm -hmm. right? But rumors you you in a relationship. That's as far as I'm taking that, right? Yeah. Obviously, how important is it is it to you to keep it private and to keep oh, it away yeah. from everything? It, it it's everything. Like people will come for your relationship groupies, men groupies, uh, female groupies, both sides, um, and just, like, pick apart shit, and I feel like your relationship, only y'all two should, should have a say-so in that, or, like, consider any opinions. It's just y'all two in the relationship, so why the fuck I need to, you know, as long as people know what's up, like, keep it on a respectful level. Like, I'm gonna let you know I'm in a relationship, for sure, so you so you keep it respectful, but as far as, like, including people in, in the relationship, I'm not into that, like, I feel like that should be private between y'all two because then you just letting too many opinions in and then motherfucker get to thinking and you know how to end that. You know, we always got, because everybody get their opinion. Yeah, and then you know what I mean? it's like so, as much as you can say that you that you don't care or fuck their opinion, da da da, that shit do, that shit do, it, it fuck with you. Every now and then, like I got super, super Thick skin, like motherfuckers done came at me in every level you could think of in the world. Oh, God. But every now and then, the motherfucker sneak through to get yeah. on your nerves, and I'll, oh, God. I'll be on my back like you bitch. Oh, God. Fuck, fuck oh, your God. Mother. Like I, I'll go crazy on that motherfucker. Oh, like God. every now and then, and I'll be like, damn, I know this dude going snap, shot my shit, and put it out there <laughs> like yo, it's Joe going feet. crazy. <laughs> Oh God, that's how it be like when I gotta clap back sometimes and shit like that. But I don't know. I just feel like it's it's just y'all. It's just y'all too business. Like my whole life, everything about being an artist is public. So the things that I can cherish and keep private, mm. want to. That's beautiful. And but with social media, it gotta be hard. To, to pull this type of thing off, it's right? so hard. Like these folks, this this generation is so tech savvy. Damn it, they is they gonna find out everything. <laughs> they gonna yeah, find I had, out everything. I had Bow Wow. I had Bow Wow on here last week, and he was talking about how he got caught with the uh, Bow Wow challenge or some shit. Like yeah. he was on the plane, and he said he yeah. was on a private. <laughs> He said somebody took the picture of him from the side. I was like, oh, no, you on Delta Airlines. Hell, yeah. It's like this shit. I it's it. like, it's, I it's it. like you got to be like, you got to be really, really uh, careful oh, in order to, uh, you they know, in order to get away with some private relationship play. type shit. They do not play. They own it. They going to find out your... Uh, your secret kids you ain't know nothing about. They gonna know your mama address, your mama name, your mama maiden name, all that. They funny. <laughs> Yo, they, I'm telling you. Let me ask you something. Do, what do you think about um your future? What you really want to mm -hmm. do? Like, if you really think about it, music, you know, everything. Like, where you want to end up? Yeah. In your future, like, what, what, what you would be like? Yeah. You know. Did, did, I did I did me like like mm -hmm. what what do you want to do? I know I don't want to rap forever. I know that. So like twenty twenty one is like I say it's my setup year. Like I'm I just filmed um my first movie whatever. So I want to be like a a name versus a song. You know what I'm saying? Like you got mm -hmm. artists that's known for them. Like you know their name and then you know their song. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be the the mulatto the celebrity big lotto the celebrity versus big lotto that got that song bitch from the south so i know i don't want to rap forever so i like 
2021, I'm setting up myself like different avenues of income, different um, brand partnerships, makeup, hair, like really like how Rihanna, uh, everybody calling me, uh, how Rihanna I ain't got in with her shit. I... What, what part it cut off on? Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, you got it. You got it. Rihanna, yeah. like a Rihanna. Yeah, like, like she got in her shit, some made her hit. For sure, that's she did her right. hits. That money gonna come in forever off of them hits. You, you to my mega hits. So I'm trying to get to a point like that and then check out and then make money in my sleep. Motherfucking right. That's the, I'm, For sure. See, I told you, you was mature. Way. See, she when was I was your age, way. I wasn't thinking like that. I was trying to be the biggest rapper. Yeah. Trying to front the most. Yeah, I think starting out. so young made me like, made me like go through the phases quicker so like i definitely was at that like when i was on a rap game oh baby i just i was just happy to be on tv i wanted new chains new cars i wanted all that so i think just starting earlier it was a blessing and a curse because it was I, I feel like i was a little too immature to be having that type of money and stuff yet but now it just set me up to be 10 steps ahead than the average 22 year old because now i'd be like i don't give a fuck about none of that shit baby i just want generational wealth I like that. That's I like that. And so, coming from a city, Atlanta, uh huh, that's just so so wealthy in hip hop history. Yeah. Uh, does it make you feel a special way that you you from Atlanta and all the history mm -hmm. it got musically? Um, it make does it make you extra proud? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And I think even from the beginning, it make it feel extra obtainable. Like as a eight year old, where what other eight year old is going to think like, oh, yeah, I could be a rapper and I, and I could be a big famous rapper. Like that sound like, oh, I could be a I could be a fairy. I could be a princess to kids from other cities. And what I mean by that is like it's been so many people that made it out of Atlanta. Like I'm talking about people that really used to be in the hood. You, you really used to see them broke like. And now they, they freaking mega superstars. So it's like it feel more obtainable when there's so many people in your city that have made it. It's so it's in Atlanta it's such an entertainment city like music, art, um, fashion, film, everything like entrepreneur wise is like the city to thrive in. So it just felt more obtainable growing up. And I didn't even know that till I started traveling. But I feel like if if a lot of more kids if a lot more kids from Atlanta traveled and they, they would appreciate the opportunity that at hand simply by just growing up in Atlanta, like that's a that's a head start already. That's a fact. It's a hub. And so say anybody out of Memphis, out of Chattanooga, mm -hmm. the whole down mm -hmm. there, they, 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 they can make it from where they're from, but they really know they got to come to the ATL or really. Right pop off. Right. And the, the same thing in New York. Same. Yeah. Same thing with New York. People got to gravitate to New York because it's where the record labels is at. Exactly. And like me, similar to you, when I was growing up, you know, the Bronx created hip hop. That's where uh -huh. I'm from. Uh -huh. And so I was just so blessed that I would see like the biggest rappers playing basketball in my hood. Right. Playing softball, shooting that, right. whatever. I was like, Everybody, they'd be like, yo, you know who's that? Yo, that's Little Wikey C, that's Shaw Rock. That's, and, and so it made me feel like I can do it. Right. You know? That shit is, that shit is inspiring. Exactly. Inspiring. That's ex it's inspiring. And what people need to understand is a lot of times you in the ATL, you showing them how you came up. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people take it as, you trying to rub it in their face when you really just trying to inspire. On oh God, on oh God, on oh God. Cause there's you so know? many other little girls, just not even from Atlanta, but period. That's like, you know, if if they hear me and hear my story and see me, shit, that could that could change somebody's life. Absolutely. And 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 that's that's what I feel. Like we, we don't sign up to be role models, mm -hmm. but eventually somehow. We become role models. Yeah. Yeah, it's not even a choice. Like, I remember when I was young, I used to be like, man, I don't got no kids. I'm not even a legal adult yet. I ain't nobody fucking role model, da da da. Especially when I was on a rap game, because they were like, you know, the, the people in the comments and stuff, like, 
basically watching the show, they just judge you like, oh, this is not a good role model, da da da. I just be like, man, fuck that, da da da. But when I got older, I'm like, damn, it's not really a choice. I don't, I don't have the choice whether or not I want to be a role model. I am. You know what I'm saying? Not if you're kind hearted. Not, not if your heart right. is big and you right. really truly love the people. Right. Then you're forced to be like, you know, I was a bad motherfucker, bro. Yeah. And and I'm turned into a good guy. I'm everything. Mm -hmm. But a fucking preacher right now. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm just like, you know, peace, love, the light, yeah. you know, <laughs> do your thing, oh, you know, all the shit. And I'm like, yo, I know they got to be motherfuckers in the Bronx. Like, is this the same guy? Like, oh, like, like, what's going on? But you turn into, you turn into, uh, it, you, you got no choice if you want your people not to go to jail. Yeah. If you want to inspire your people to mm -hmm. to become successful, if yeah. you know, we got it, we got to walk that straight line. So back to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually go your top five favorite rappers, but I want your top mm -hmm. five favorite artists from Atlanta. From Atlanta. Ooh, okay. One, I'm going to have to say Gucci because Gucci was always my favorite rapper growing up. He just so for the culture, like Gucci for show. On uh, this and no that, that versus that Gucci, so so the Gucci Jeezy, you was going Gucci. Oh, for sure, but but I did. I was going, I was going Jeezy, and Gucci. if I'm gonna keep it a buck. Yeah. I love Gucci. Yeah, but I, I, but but G, Jeezy, my God, like I'm like. Yeah. I was in no, there yeah. Jeezy. That's why I said, let me clarify that, though. Gucci was just my personal favorite. But <clears throat> growing up, oh, definitely. My daddy had the snowman shirts and all that. Like, yeah, for sure. We, I definitely grew up on Jeezy, too. But, so um, you got, you got uh, Gucci. You got four yeah. more. These not in, this not in order, too, for that get messy on this bitch. This is not in order. So I'm going to say Gucci. I'm going to say um, Tip, for sure, Tip. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, Outcast. Love mm. Outcast. Definitely grew up on Outcast. Um, I'm gonna say Luda. Luda wordplay crazy. Luda. Yeah, he one of the best ever. Yeah, and then he, he, he's my favorite Atlanta artist ever. Yeah, Luda Chris. Artist, artist, artist. Um, I'm gonna. You say, got four. I got one more though. You got one more. Damn. Atlanta having that shit. I'ma just say I'ma say Sierra because that 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 touched me. That's like, cool. That's great. Sierra. Growing up, like I was trying to uh watch her music videos and learn the dances and shit. Like Use my I had goodies, you, you was dropping it like Sierra. Oh, for sure, and getting in trouble too. <laughs> Yo, this let me tell you something about Sierra, man. Yeah. You know. I went on like three tours with Sierra. Oh, for real? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went on three tours with her. I mean, tours, like yeah. city to city. Then we went to Africa. We went on tour in Africa together. Yeah. Yeah. Like we was out there, right? Mm -hmm. So one day, you know, I do a concert with her in Africa. Like we on tour, right? Yeah. And then the next day we got to take the plane to the next part of Africa. Uh-huh. And I'm sitting first class. And it's a girl sitting next to me with a hat, like, you know, like ducking. You can't see her face. So yeah. I'm like, yo, Sierra, if you don't stop fucking me an extra <laughs> right now, like, 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 don't be acting like you wasn't on tour with me for two oh, months. God. Like, what the fuck wrong with you? Like, like, like I'm like, yo, I was, I, oh, I was going to forget that shit. I'm sitting next to I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, CC. <laughs> I'm trying to act like Hell no. I'm like, yo my I ain't got to meet her. I have not got to meet her yet. Nah, oh no, you haven't met her? No. But oh, okay, so you. like when I was young, I was on set of uh, some of her music videos because like my daddy would have all these like real nice cars or whatever. So they would like they would call him like, Hey, can you bring your um cars through? Whatever. So he would bring like, you know, the candy paint cars and the rims and shit. So he was in a couple of her videos. His cars was in a couple of her videos, and I was the daddy's girl. So I would be on set with him. I can't even remember what songs, but it was like the the big songs type shit. So I, like from a distance as a kid, I met her, but never formally like check her. Yeah, but she know who you is. Sierra know what's up. She yeah. Tuned in. Yeah. She know what's up. Like how weird is that? Like you said, 
I said your top five Atlanta artists, you said Gucci, right? Yeah. And you have a song, video with Gucci. What was that like? That shit was like, that was, for me, that was confirmation. Like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm really doing something. Because, you know, like, when it's yourself, you get kind of, I don't know, you can either go two ways. You can get big-headed as fuck, and you can be like, oh, yeah, I'm the shit. My shit do not stink. Yeah, y'all ain't shit. I'm the shit. Or you can go, like, where you don't even be knowing how big you getting. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Yeah, that believe it or like, not, so I, I, I might, I definitely have gotten gassed or been feeling myself at some point. But yeah. for the most part, when I look back at my career, I did not know I was that, that yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I, I look back like now and be like, damn, we was throwing up number ones after number ones. Oh, like, God. we was, so now if we look now, right, like if me, mm -hmm. as a fan, I look at the people who got number one after number one now, and I be like, damn, they doing it big. But I was yeah. really doing that. Right, so I didn't right. Know that at the time. Right. Right. I was popping like that. Right. I feel like I'm going to be like that, too, because I ain't got no number ones. But one day, I'm going to have them, and I feel like I'm going to be like that. Because, like, right now, I don't even be knowing. So, like, when they when they said that Gucci was even down to get on a song with me and that he wanted to know if he could sign me and shit, I'm like, what the fuck? Because this is, like, somebody, this is, like, fucking Atlanta royalty. This is, like, real life paved the way for trap music period but especially me being from atlanta him being from atlanta that shit was huge to me that shit was everything to me like everything to me yeah i had some of those moments rest in peace your father would know heavy d yeah. heavy d somebody inspired me the first time i met heavy d it was like it was like i was like because i you know i used to dance like sierra heavy d was the fly oh, yeah. big boy he was oh, the yeah. big fat light-skinned guy with the fly gear he used to yeah. dance so I'll be in front of my projects dancing like Heavy D. <laughs> and so when I had my first record out, I met him in the bathroom. Out of all things, I'm in the bathroom uh -huh. taking a piss. And he walks in. He says, you got to flow, Joe. You got." I wanted to die. Like, yeah. I, like at that moment, I wanted to die. I was like, yeah. oh, shit. Heavy yeah. knows who I am. You know? Uh, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. That shit. Because was in there like, it was unbelievable yep. shooting that with your idol. Yep, I know that feeling. That shit, that shit is next level. Like fuck all the the extra shit. That shit hit different. Like the you you gonna get money, you gonna get your first car, first chain, da da da. But that feeling right there, that shit different. That shit different. Yeah, you, you know how big this world is, and you, and you know so many people look up to them, and then for you to actually work with them, I did that with KRS. I did that with LL Cool J, my two biggest idols, mm -hmm. and uh. And, and I couldn't believe, when I met LL Cool J, boy, that was like, because, you know, LL, you don't meet LL. Mm -hmm. like LL, we never seen LL Cool J in the hood. That's all uh -huh. I'm He's from New York. Uh -huh. Never seen him there. Yeah. And he was like, let's just say like you, like Bow Wow. He was yeah. famous since he was 15. Right. I mean, Justin Bieber rapper famous. Right. right? Like, we never seen this guy. Yeah. And then uh, when I finally met him, he was like, you know, he was like, yo, I want you to come talk because he had a charity for kids. I was like, bet. He came to my projects to pick me up. I was still in the projects. Yeah. He came to my, my mom was sitting on the bench. He came to my projects to pick me up. And he pulled up in the uh, convertible Benz uh -huh. and it was tinted window. And he put his hand out the window. He had like a Rolex. And he told me yeah. like, to come over. And I was like, fuck, no, you getting out that motherfucking <laughs> car. They gonna see LL Cool J with Fat Joe on this motherfucker. Oh God! Guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, fuck that! Like get Dude. out of the car. Dude. I still got the pictures of me and my mother. Like it was like crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was like that's crazy. what I'm saying. That shit hit different. Cause look, you remember every single detail. Like that shit hit different. There you go. So Mulatto, you got new music out. What's what's the new project out? So I got Queen of the South out. I had dropped Queen of the South in August of 2020. Then I just dropped the Deluxe in 20, um, 2020. But at the end, like um, December, whatever, I just dropped the Deluxe in December. And the single off of that is Sex Lies with Lil Baby. We just dropped the video and everything. So that's going that's to be a hot ass video, too, Milano. For sure. For sure. That's and you know, I appreciate that for real because I'm so hands on with my videos. Like, 
I don't yeah, play it. Like, too. I want to talk to the director on the phone, just me and the director. Like, I'm real hands on with the videos or whatever. So, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I do it too. I think that's one of the greatest, uh, the greatest things we do as creators. Mm -hmm. Like, I make a song in the studio and I'll be telling mm -hmm. the crew in the studio, like, we got a crew in the studio. Yeah. Like, talk shit about sports, this, yeah. that, this, that, and then we get yeah. to work. So, mm -hmm. my crew be in there and I'll be like, yo. I'm gonna jump off a fucking yacht in a minute. Why are you recording? I, Why are you recording you saying this? No, no, no. In the studio, I was talking shit. Yeah. So, yeah, while I record it. Yeah. See, I believe a hit record, if you can't see the visual for it on the spot, oh, it ain't God. a hit. Oh, God, I say that. Like, while I'm recording, if I can't, like, if I can't. Sometimes see you can make a dope record, mind. but if you don't see it, it ain't a hit. Oh, God. Wow. My, shout out to my engineer, Pharaoh, because we both be saying this shit. That's crazy that you say that. It's not. I never heard nobody say that. I always thought it was just me. But when I when I got a record, I think it's going to be a hit. And I'm like, yo, we're going to be pulling up back to back. We're going to be yep. in the silk shit. Yep. We're going to be in this and this. And then do it. Yep. You know, like when you do it, when you sh shoot the video, set slides and little babies in that bitch, and mm -hmm. you're doing exactly what you wanted to do. Yep. You're like, wow, I really thought of this shit. It's almost like yep. a dream come true. Yep. You see everything unfold from that first conversation that you had. That shit, that shit hard. Man, that's crazy. Mulatto, big lotto. Big lotto. Yo, yo, do me, do me so I'm going to take this out of the I want you to say, this is big, 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 big lotto on the big show. I need that for my Y'all yeah. already know what the fuck going on. It's big, 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 big lotto on the big, big, big show. Hey, I love you. Be safe out there. I love you and, too. Uh, stay focused. For sure. I'll, I'll, I'll tell your friends you. I send my love. I will. All right, bye bye. <laughs> Boy, you don't know who I know. Shit. You don't know who I know. You don't know who I know. And so we touch everything, man. And it's our job to vibe with the youth and the, and the new leaders of the future. It's our job to talk to them. That's what this is all about. It's about inspiring them, man. Yo, Ro Parrish, I see you on that TV, Ro Parrish. I see you on that NBA TV talking that shit. You don't know who I know. And so shout out to uh, everybody out there uh, in the ATL. Big Lotto doing her thing, killing the game. She seemed very, very focused, uh, and I wish her well. This is the big, big show. We on Revolt TV every Tuesday at 10 p.m. As you can see, Ciroc, a much finer vodka. Shout out to Fan Mio, F-A-N-M-I-O, if you want to connect one-on-one -on -one with your favorite artist. It's happy birthday, Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys, my sister. If you go on her Instagram, she dancing on that yacht to that new Fat Joe single, Sunshine Delight. Today was the showdown with me and my brother DJ Khaled, one on one, the basketball game. I do not want to spoil it for y'all, but let's just say I showed up. And I told the man, Khaled, my brother, we always let him win. All he do is win, win, win. But I'm not going to lay down. I'm not going to say, you, Khaled, I'm going to let you win. I'm not doing that. That's not what I do. So if he going to beat me, he got to come with his A game. It's simple as that. In real news, they trying to impeach Trump for the second time. The man is not the president no more, and they still trying to give him the business. And he deserves it. And so making these hit records, it ain't easy. I tell you all the time, I'd rather have been a one-hit wonder than a no-hit wonder. Imagine your dream is to be an artist and you made a hit. You get to chill and go on the red carpet and be at the BET Awards and go to, to the Grammys and see your favorite 
Man, I'd rather be a one-hit wonder than a no-hit wonder. But let alone to continue making hit records forever, that's a different type of thing. That is a different type of thing. And so when I see those artists, I remember when Rick Ross first came out, he had hustling, 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 hustling. And then we used to bang on the wall. In Miami, we used to bang. Hustling, can, hustling will probably be the biggest record I ever heard in the club in Miami. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Hustling, hustling. And, and they, they used to bang on the wall. We would bang, every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. And, but even when Ross came out with that, I wasn't sure if he was going to have a career after that. It wasn't until I got the album, I said, oh, shit. This guy bought that life. He want to stick around. He ain't no one hit wonder. And they dropped the second album, Hits, Same Shit, Fly album. Oh, he wants to stick around. And so you know the difference from artists who just want to do, want to be hot for a little bit or whatever. When they're consistent, they want to stick around. Serge, what's good? And so Big Lotto, I stood home today. And I just studied her. And I'm really impressed. Yes, yeah, she was a little girl. If you grew up watching the, the, the show, you would say to yourself, damn, that was little mulatto. Now she's dressed as sexy or whatever. But people grow. She's a little girl, 15 years old. Now she's a young woman, 21. You know, she's proud of who she is. And so some people, I realize, can't get with that. You know? And, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm proud of her. She's doing amazing things. Tomorrow night, we have a big show. It might get heated. Chances are the show will take a twist. So we've always in the light. We always positive. We always celebrate people. But my guest tomorrow it might get lit in here because he asked to come on the show because I said some funny style shit about him. I'm talking about Ebro from the morning show. And so I said a couple of times I wanted to hurt him and Sean Beckers talked me out of it. And so he doesn't like that. I talk like that about him. And so he FaceTimed me and told me, listen, you got a hit. I'm not going to lie, Joe, but I want to come on the show and I want to talk my shit. And so I'm like, are you sure you want to come on my show and talk your shit? Yeah, I'm going to talk my shit. All right, then. All right, come talk your shit. And so tomorrow I'll be very surprised if it doesn't get just a little contesty, little heated. We don't sell it. This is not a shock value. This isn't clickbait. This isn't nothing. You know, I don't get down like that. But it might. Pristine Jewelers, I'm waiting on my chain. I'm waiting. Pristine Jewelers, I seen you on G5s. I know you want all that money in Vegas, but where's my chain? It's part of the rollout. I don't know if y'all seen Jamie Foxx yesterday, my brother Breon, that, you know, posting the new video, song, the video. That's Alicia Keys today. It's her birthday. The queen Alicia Keys. She's on a yacht somewhere in some island. And out of all records in the world, thank Jesus is Lord, she plays Sunshine the Light. And she's getting down to the shit. And I'm like, yes! And so part of the shit going down is Pristine's supposed to pop up and be like, yo, Joe, 
pristine jewelers, your chain is ready. And they put the big shit with so much diamonds on my shit. And so, I'm waiting on my shit. I paid for it. Where's it at? I need the big donkey shit. And so I've been a sucker for jury my whole life. Since I was 14, y'all know. Y'all from the Bronx, y'all know what it is. I've been rocking that shit. You can't even find a fucking picture with Fat Joe from the beginning without a big ass medallion and a Rolex on my arm. It don't exist. It don't exist. Every picture you ever seen from Flojo, I got the Dunky Cuban link with the medallion. And so, that's my shit. And pristine, you fucking up the vibes. You can't rush greatness. <laughs> Yo, pristine, I told you Tom Brady was winning. I'm always a Tom Brady. When it comes to football, I don't know nothing about football, guys. Nothing. But I do know that Tom Brady is the best. I do know that my whole life. Now, Tom Brady is the greatest of all time. The Michael Jordan of football. And every year I jump on his bandwagon. But the problem is Patrick Mahone is the new Tom Brady. He's cold as ice. The year I seen Tom Brady beat Patrick Mahone, I said next year Patrick Mahone will win the chip. He won the chip. Now you got Tom Brady, Patrick Mahone. Patrick Mahone, because he's one step quicker. And he's calm too. And so that's my opinion. And so I told Pristine, who loves to gamble a little, we call them uncut gems. I said, listen, your eye, I want to place a bet. And I don't bet. I never bet. And I said, yo, I want to throw something. You know, I'm talking, you know, something good. I want to, I want to bet on Patrick Mahomes. He said, keep your money, stay, stay a non better. And I'm like, yo, what? I'm like. I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, keep your money, man. Don't bet. He's wrong. And he's been winning. He's been on a roll. Tom Brady's the man. I'm a bandwagon Tom Brady fan. It's like when my Knicks don't make it, if they don't make it, because they're looking great this year. I'm not mad at my Knicks. They're fighters. And even when we lose, we lose by two, three points. I'm fucking with that. And you saw the shout out, yo, butter. You know I had to do it to anyway. I ain't gonna say nothing, they butter. All my Rucker family is so much easier to coach than to play. And man, I was so out of shape, a hey, butter. No pristine, a million dollars on Brady. Stop! Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. A million dollars on Brady? Don't do it. Patrick Mahomes, I guess anybody else, I would have said yes. Do not do it. And I'm a Tom Brady fan. Playing yourself. You in the Royal Elite guy. You playing yourself. Somebody said, Brooklyn is the new New York. It's only one ball. But I can't lie, they have an amazing team. But my Knicks, we fighting. For us not having a superstar, even though Randall is playing hard, my Knicks, we fighting. And so check this out before I leave, and I'll tell you how good God is, and to praise God, and to have faith. Um... There's a new mayor in town. His name is Isaac Wright Jr. If you love Joe Crack and you believe what I stand for, the people, a.k.a. us, 
for us, by us, click that link, donate $1, $5, $10, whatever you can to his campaign. The man is for the people. Once again, I want you to hear this story and tell me, have you ever seriously in your life heard of a better story than this? The man was falsely accused of a crime. They gave him life and 72 years. Life plus 72 years in prison. I probably would have killed myself at that point. He goes to law library. He becomes a, a jail lawyer. He helps 20 people who had 30 years, 40 years come home from jail. Seven years later, he beats the case. He goes to college, becomes a lawyer. Now he's in the same courtroom defending people where they falsely accused him. Have you ever in your entire life heard of a better story? Fifty Cent has a TV show for ABC for Life, which is number one. And so the man sees it from the lens of where I see it from. From the real people, the struggle, oppression. And that's why I stand next to this guy. All right, guys. But God first, I'll see you tomorrow. Our guest, you know him well, Ebro from the morning show of Apple Music. Uh, we're going to talk hip hop, incredible stories, things that we might not know that he's been through. He's going to try to act tough. Um, Yo, Ro Parrish, I see you on that TV, man. Thanks for the shout out. You talked about being Cali playing the game. Kenny Smith hit me up. He said he wanted to do the commentating. Shout out to Steve Stowe, the Miami Heat, for letting us play in the Miami Heat arena. Boy, that ball goes in that net so smooth when you play on the NBA court. That ball just go whoosh. You hear that shit go whoosh. All right, y'all. Peace, y'all. The biggest.